Okay, so today I'll be discussing ruminal parakeratosis. Uh, so what is ruminal parakeratosis? It is a disease of cattle and sheep characterized by hardening and enlargement of the papilla of the rumen. Uh, it is most common in animals fed a high concentrate ration during the finishing period. As you can see in this image, um, the disease results in lesions. You can see the lesions there. And um, these are due to the pH of the rumen in the animal being lowered and the increased concentration of volatile fatty acids in the ruminal fluid. Um, so the causes of parakeratosis. So parakeratosis happens as a result of dietary changes, but specifically can be caused by the abrupt introduction of like starch or sugar to the diet or sharp increases in feed intake. Uh, in response to the demands for the increased feed conversion, cattle, sheep and goat producers rely rap on rapidly fermentable diets such as high grain diets to maximise energy intake. Um, however, this is problematic as ruminants fed high grain diets are at a greater risk of developing ruminal or metabolic acidosis. Um, this may severely compromise um, their gastrointestinal function, the feed conversion and the health and welfare of the animal. Uh, it's also seen in cattle fed rations of um, heat treated alfalfa pellets as well as in calves with prolonged ruminal acidosis due to ruminal drinking. So here in this photo it's a severely affected um, rumen. Um, so basically wheat and barley, they're the most common ingredients that cause the disease but it can also occur with oats and lupins. Uh, the processing of the grain is really important in terms of its effect, so crushing or cracking of the grain by like a hammer mill increases the uh, likelihood of acidosis occurring, as this process allows for a quicker release of the carbohydrates when they reach the rumen. Um, so basically the effects of parakeratosis, so many of the papillae are enlarged and hardened and several may adhere together to form bundles, so you can see in this photo here, there are the bundles. Um, so the papillae of the anterior ventral sac are commonly affected. In cattle, the roof of the dorsal sac may show multiple foci, each about two to three centimeters squared uh, of parakeratosis. Um, in sheep, abnormal papillae may be visible and palpable through the wall of the intact rumen. Uh, affected papillae contain excessive layers of keratinized epithelial cells, particles of food and bacteria. The abnormal epithelium, by interfering with absorption, may reduce the efficiency of feed and utilization and, sorry, of feed utilization and rate of gain of the animal. Uh, the clinical manifestations of parakeratosis in cattle include depressed feed intake and milk production, laminitis, liver abscesses, diarrhea and extensive alterations of rumen micro microflora populations and their fermentation products. Um, so here as you can see in all of these photos, these are mainly beef cattle with, uh, this is their livers with the abscesses. So, um, the, so the liver abscesses are very common manifestation and uh, the rumen epithelium acts as a protective barrier between the rumen environment and portal circulation however the ruminal bacteria can leak into the bloodstream through the areas of the rumen wall that have been thinned by lesions from here they are transported into the liver where they cause the severe abscesses uh, rumen mucosal damage is another consequence associated with the rumen acidosis so basically the rumen mucosa plays a vital role in whole animal energy balance through the transport and metabolism of rumen derived volatile fatty acids uh, diarrhea. Um, so diarrhea in your herd is the clearest indicator that there are problems with the rumen function and your ration. So the grey bubbly appearance of the manure indicates that the animal is suffering from parakeratosis. So on the slide you can see the top two um, poos. They are very good quality. Uh, they're the correct colour and they've got a good texture and some solidarity in comparison to like the bottom three which are very loose. Uh, you can see the bubbles and grey colouring in the picture on the bottom right hand corner. This one here the bubbles there and also in the bottom left hand corner here you can see the undigested materials uh, this shows that the rumen isn't functioning properly and um, so in terms of treatment um, a veterinarian will give you a treatment plan based on the severity of the disease treatments include like intravenous fluids drenching with bicarbonate solution or like milk of magnesia and um, intraruminal antibiotic injections thiamine or steroid injections and like possible to get surgery for very valuable animals. Uh, following acidosis a para uh, and parakeratosis, the rumen lining takes up to about six weeks to repair, so recovering animals will show poor growth rate at this time and they can also like develop secondary infections. Um, so in terms of prevention, um, parakeratosis can be prevented by gradually introducing animals to grains or pellets. 
So like the amount of grain in the time taken to adapt the sheep or cattle to the grain depends on lots of different things, like the availability of hay and other feeds. So basically when you're feeding grain to cattle for production, uh, you have to ensure that there's a good quality source of hay or silage always available. And then it makes up at least about 20% of the ration, unless you're feeding a complete ration where the roughage and the grain are mixed. It also depends on the time of year. So like it can be affected. I mean, for example, like if there's storms, the animals often will like increase their intake and then this can be obviously very problematic and um, then also the type of grain being fed um, and the aims of the feeding such as like wieners for sale or for lactating ewes and um, so like for example you use like oats and, lumen, and lupins in preference to or before transitioning to wheat or barley uh, during the introduction phase you'd feed grain daily you'd introduce oats to the sheep by starting with like 50 grams on the first day following by like increases of like 50 grams per head per day until the required ration is reached and then with cattle if you were to introduce oats you'd start with 500 grams per day followed by increases of about 500 grams per head every fourth day until the required ration is reached and then to transition from wheat or barley to like to wheat or barley from oats and um, you'd increase the wheat or barley portion by 25 percent um, of the oat ration every five days over 16 days and um, you can also get like specific antibiotic products that uh, selectively reduce the numbers of acid producing bacteria in the gut uh, these are available like on prescription from vets and um, these make it safe to introduce the grain more rapidly without like a long conditioning process which is obviously like economically beneficial and um, there are my references let's give her a round of applause <laughs> yes the rumen should not go acidic. That's your take home message, because then it does physical damage, and if it does enough physical damage, then you have those bacteria and protozoa leaking into the blood supply, and that sends up liver abscesses oftentimes. Maybe I was question. just gonna ask, do you know if it affects like, the meat quality of the animal? Um, I'm not actually positive about that, but I just know that like obviously it would affect breeding, because a lot of these animals, like. If they suffer from this, they'll develop secondary infections and everything, and then you'll probably have to call the animal, and then it'll it, be... It can be like a train wreck almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And of course, it's like biology. It can be like a little bit mm -hmm. and a little more. You know how that is. Someplace along the continuum, I guess you'd call it. And like in your herd, some animals can suffer due to like, like if your feed and your ration is mixed properly, like if they're getting a certain part of the feed at the bottom, and like it's kind of more milled, let's say, that will like affect them more. So some animals will experience it, but like some animals won't. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you have to really watch Feed that. bunk management, yeah. really, the mixing is, yeah. I mean, everything is so critical, because if you don't mix it right, then somebody down at this end of the bunk will get a different ration than this end of the bunk. But you can also see like bloat, so it'll be on like the left side, because um, that's like where the room mm -hmm. is located, so you'll see bloat, and then like you kind of know it's from par paratosis because of the gas production. Yeah, that's very, and those villi are very necessary to absorb nutrients, like volatile fatty acids, I think is a big one. Okay. Yeah, it's amazing.